Hey, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to mimic, shall we say, access, Microsoft Access, form, subform, and grids control functionality in an Excel VBA form. I've in the past found this to be kind of problematic, but I've found a cool little workaround that I quite like. So let me first of all show you the uh, end state of play. So if I click this review contacts button, we're going to get a form. And here we go. So this is basically an Excel VBA form with a list box on the left and a list box on the right. But the list box on the right is behaving like a grid. So for example, if I, I can click anywhere on the grid and as I scroll up and down, you notice that it's keeping its headers on top. And then we can um, do your sort of subform, master form, subform aspect. So for example, if I click on Boston, I get the uh, two elements, the two contacts that are in Boston, Honolulu, the one contact that's in Honolulu, click on Memphis, I can choose this person, then go to Las Vegas and the form resets to deselect the, um, all contacts and I can so decide to choose a different contact. Now, in the past, getting this kind of functionality, for example, having it hold, having the form hold the headers has been difficult. I've had to, shall we say, create list boxes on top to mimic the headers. But what I'm going to show you here will show you a way of getting around that. So for example, uh, what people normally have to do if you have a form, let me go to the VBA editor just to show you the problem. So I load the form by just pressing play here. And so here you see you have the form, but as you can see, the headers are not identified. For example, if I go back to Excel, the data source I'm going to look at in this instance, you can see you've got a header here and you've got data here. Now, although the data is on a spreadsheet here, it could just as easily be an array coming back from SQL Server or Oracle or any third party data source. The, um, the data is going to be loaded into the form via an array. So that array could be populated from SQL Server, Oracle, or anywhere else. So if I load the data anyway, you can see the problem most of the time is you've got your header here, but it's just part of the data. So in other words, there's no way of identifying the top row of your data as being the header when you're just populating from an array of data. There isn't a programmatic way of doing it. There's no VBA code line that you can use in order to say such and such is a header. So the workaround that I have used in the past is just to uh, not call through the top layer of data and put text boxes above the list box and try and make the widths of the text box equate to the column widths, which is really messy. Well, I'm going to show you in this particular um, tutorial a workaround to populate grids and make grids on your Excel VBA forms similar to the example I've just shown you which is to get your grids to look like this where now your IDs and job titles and cities and headers are actually working like a grid and when we scroll the headers stay where they are. So enjoy the tutorial. Let's get into the details now of building the form subform grid. So initially we create a form, I call it form data. And step one is create, put a list box onto it. In this instance, I've called it list cities. And the second list box I've called list data. Now these are the two main important elements to making this particular thing work. A lot of other stuff here is the icing on the cake. So I'm just going to pretty much concentrate on the most important stuff that you need to know. So what I'm going to do now is go to the code. I've split the uh, VBA editor and Excel sheet so you can actually see what's happening. I've clicked the review contacts button and within the user form, use uh, form data, the user form initialize event has fired. So what we've got here is a variant, I've created a variant array 
to populate the first list box, the city's list box, with data. This, for example, in this instance, it's just come from the spreadsheet, but this array could be populated, for example, from, as I said before, a SQL Server database or a mainframe file or wherever you're getting your data from. And if you look at the array V cities, you can see it's just a standard array. It's a one based array because in this instance, it's been taken from a spreadsheet, but you can see element one, one is Boise, element two is Boston, element three is Chicago, etc. And what we do is you populate the list by getting the list property of list boxes and setting it to the array. So list cities that list equals V cities and that line of code populates the cities list. That's already got to do. But the problem being, it's just a basic list box. You don't have headers. It's not acting as a grid. So in order to make things work like a, a grid for the list box to the right of list cities, we'll go to the next element. I've created a subroutine called load all data to list. And we're going to go into that now. Step one of this workaround is, so if you imagine, pretend that the data is coming from a database, step one is we have a hidden sheet. And what happens with this hidden sheet is the data that you get from the third party database or wherever you've got it from, the trick is to write it to a hidden sheet. So for the purposes of this particular tutorial, the sheet obviously isn't hidden, but you would hide it in reality. The other element to, to bear in mind is there, there's a, there would be a routine to actually delete all of this data here prior to writing it down to the spreadsheet. But in this instance, we're showing you how to connect it. So it's relatively simple to delete all this data. Okay, so let's first of all get a reference to this data. So I've created a range variable called range data, um, type range, and so I'm setting it to this region. So sheet data source, this is the sheet, this data source sheet is, is called sheet data source because if you look in the project window, you'll see its code name is sheet data source and the tab name is data source. So the ta the name here is the one that gets displayed to the users. So if I F8 over that, we've now initialized range data. So if I go into the, the immediate window and click on range data that select, you can see the whole range is selected. However, we don't want to apply the range including headers to the list box. So what we're going to do first of all is on list data, we're going to set its column headers to true. That means we want the column headers to display like a grid on the list box. The next step is we need to tell the list box how many columns are in the data. And we do this via the range data that columns that count property. So if I were to type that into the um, immediate window, You can see uh, we have six columns and you can see here we also have six columns. So we're telling the list data, list data that its column count will be six. So if I execute that line of code and we now query this data, you can see now it knows that we have six columns. Now the next stage is we want to just give it the address of this data excluding the columns. So what I'm going to do is modify the range data variable and tell and in the modified range data, I'm going to resize it and say the size is going to be the amount of rows in the data minus one. So you can see the data has got 30 rows. But if I highlight what I'm actually giving it minus one will come to 29 rows. So if I highlight it, there you go 29 rows. But with those 29 rows, offset it, offset the selection by one row. So if I execute that line of code, and now I go back and I select the range, you'll see the header is no longer selected. There you go. So now what we need to do is tell the data list the address of this row. So we set the row source property of list data to the address of this data. Now the address has got two elements. It's got 
range data dot address you can see there but also we've got multiple spreadsheets here tabs so we got to tell the list box what the tab name is as well so for example if i highlight range data dot parents that name i can't see anything in the intellisense so what i'll do is i'll just put this into the immediate box and you're basically going to give the list box an address which range data dot parent dot name gives you data source which is the tab name and you've got the uh, exclamation mark which is the uh, delimiter between the, the spreadsheet name and the address and range data dot address so we give it that particular address and now what I've done here is you can set the column widths of each column with the column widths property and what you'll notice is that the actual data has an ID column, but I've decided in the list box, I don't want to display it. It will get loaded to the list box and the information will be in the list box, but I'm not displaying it to the user. So I'm giving the ID column a width of zero. I'm giving the last name column a width of 80, the first name column 70, the job title column 115, and the city column 70 and the uh, state province column 20. Now, I think it's TWIPS, I think is the term, uh, in terms of what that measurement is. Now, the trick is, this is all trial and error, getting to that, but there's a neat little trick you can do in order to determine what the columns will be, so you can do it in real time. And what I, the way I normally do that is I get the click event of well in this instance we've got this data that click but you could also get the click event of the form and i'll show you that a little bit later whereby then in real time you can adjust the column widths and test to see what's happening so let's just run this piece of code and see what we get and when we run that piece of code you have the column names adjusted last name first name job title city state province all been taken from the top row of the data here. So that's pretty much how you load it. So basically, as I said, um, let's just let's just show you it in operation. So now this is the shall we say extra credit code that's here. You can you can do your Microsoft Access style tests here by clicking on various items you could click here you can also within this form put in extra on click functionality so basically when i click there um, another form could populate or some action can be done all of this can be programmed so you could have multiple levels and you can build very very interactive forms using this method so I'm going to hit close on that right now. So what I'm now going to, what I'm now going to show you is how to interactively adjust the column widths. So the trick that I like to use, I double click on this form. Um, I will go to list, I will go to user form and I'll get the double click method and I'll simply just put a stop in here. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy up this column widths piece of code and I'm going to put it here and now I'm going to run the code again so if we go to the contacts sheet and I do review contacts and now I guess I can just remove the breakpoints because I don't need them any longer and we have the form comes up now if i click on the form or double click on the form you can see that the double click event has fired and what i can now do i actually I copied this into the wrong area let's just move this control exit and put it into here so now what i can do is i can play with these widths in real time so let's for example make um last name the let's actually just display the id column that's a useful uh, exercise so i will make this shall we say 30 twips and i'll put a stop sign here as well or stop command and watch the id column watch the id column come into view basically so now you have the id column displayed and i can for example um, make the last name column um, 
a lot wider. So let's go 90 and I will just drag the cursor up and we've done that. So now if I just run it out and now close the form and run it again, we'll, we're back to the initial situation be, mainly because I haven't changed the code. Let me just double click here to get my form back. I have not changed the uh, instructions in the user form initialize. But when you're trying to come up with the column widths to use, the trick is to do what I've just done here. Get the form double click event or single click event, click on the form and in real time you can adjust your column widths to whatever suits you. I hope this was helpful. Um, I think it was because I wish I'd known this many years ago. I would have done, I would have built user forms a lot quicker because I wouldn't have had to create list boxes here to make uh, my forms look like um, look like this. So yeah, it, it's no particular uh, piece of information that you can that you can do this from the perspective of connecting to a spreadsheet range. But the element of using the spreadsheet range as a hidden interme intermediary black box is what makes this very useful. Go to businessprogrammer.com forward slash go forward slash 106 to download the code that goes with this tutorial. And you can also get updates on future videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching.